Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Ohio 4-H Celebration of Youth. The theme for this year is Pathways to the Future. My name is Elizabeth Thomas, and I have the honor of being the Ohio 4-H Foundation Board President. We all know 2020 has been such a challenging year, unique to say the least. Even so, Ohio 4-H has shown to be perseverant, resilient, and innovative in order to continue to support positive youth development to help build the pathway to the future for the youth of Ohio. On behalf of the Ohio 4-H Foundation Board, we are pleased you have chosen to be with us this evening to support this outstanding program, Ohio 4-H Celebration of Youth. It is my hope that you will make a bid on one of our spectacular auction items, make a donation. But most of all, please enjoy this evening's program. It features some of our amazing 4-Hers in the state of Ohio. Now, it is my pleasure to graciously welcome Ty Higgins, Director of Media Relations for the Ohio Farm Bureau. Ty, thank you so very much for hosting this evening. Now, I would like to turn the program over to you. Thanks so much, Elizabeth, and good evening, everyone. A pleasure to be with you, and we have a great event celebrating Ohio 4-H. Tonight, we take the opportunity not only to raise funds for Ohio 4-H youth development, but to celebrate the accomplishments of Ohio 4-H youth. Throughout the evening, we'll hear from 4-H members around the state and how they still made the best better in this challenging time. Before we get to that, I want to make sure everyone bids in the online auction. You'll want to go to 4hcoy.givesmart.com. That link's also going to be in the chat box. Uh, tonight's proceeds will help 4-H forge new pathways to future success and grow the program throughout Ohio. The auction is open until 9 o'clock. Be sure and visit and bid high to buy. I also want to thank our sponsors because without them, this event would not be possible. We have Platinum, Gold, Silver, and Green Clover sponsors that are so appreciated for their continued support. These sponsors certainly help make the best better tonight. And I especially want to recognize Nationwide as the presenting sponsor of the Celebration of Youth. Tonight, Dan Durheim, Associate Vice President of Sponsor Relations, is here with us to say a few words. Greetings from Nationwide. I'm Dan Durheim, Associate Vice President of Sponsor Relations. On behalf of the Nationwide Board of Directors, senior leadership, and more than 25,000 associates, we are proud to be this year's presenting sponsor of the Ohio 4-H Celebration of Youth virtual event. We believe that our investment in positive youth development is essential to the future of the communities in which we live and work. As a third generation 4-H alum myself, and now parenting three fourth generation 4-Hers, my family and I have seen and experienced firsthand the impacts of this life-changing program. A program that inspires us to live up to the 4-H motto, to make the best better. The alignment of setting high expectations resonates well with us at Nationwide as we pursue our mission to protect people, businesses, and futures with extraordinary care. Thank you to the hardworking staff and volunteers, as well as the support from the community partners that made this event possible. Utmost, I look forward to hearing from our youth throughout this evening's program. I expect that I will leave inspired by their stories of the grit and the leadership it took to continue on their journey through these unprecedented times. It is our pleasure to continue the nationwide support to 4-H here in Ohio and throughout the nation. Please join me in watching a video of some of the other ways that Nationwide supports and cares for our community 
And don't forget to dig deep in your pockets and support to grow Ohio 4-H. Say hello to Nationwide, a company that cares. We say that we're more than a business because it's true. At Nationwide, we work together to create lasting change in our communities. What makes us different from other companies is our focused approach to lending a hand and supporting communities across America. Nationwide has been fighting hunger for nearly 40 years. We give to United Way and the Nationwide Foundation matches our contributions. Volunteering is a big deal for us. Our passion for giving is recognized with time off, grants to our favorite organizations, and a Volunteer of the Year award celebration. The Nationwide Foundation is a founding member of the American Red Cross Annual Disaster Giving Program. We help our partners prepare to meet emergency and basic needs in times of crisis or disaster. I'm proud to work for Nationwide. We opened the first on-site American Red Cross Blood Donor Center at our headquarters. Giving blood has been a tradition at Nationwide since 1944, and today we work with blood partners across the country. One cause close to our hearts is Nationwide Children's Hospital. The hospital provides life-saving care to more than a million kids from around the world, regardless of their ability to pay. Through the support of the Nationwide Foundation, we are transforming the way care is delivered, not only in Columbus, but across the country and around the world. We have developed one of the largest and fastest growing research institutes in the country, and we are recruiting some of the best and brightest physicians who are developing new cures and treatments that are benefiting children everywhere. Nationwide not only supports my volunteerism in the community, but encourages it. We transform lives at critical moments because we're a company that cares. Dan, thank you so much. We appreciate all the support we receive from Nationwide. Our next guest is the Vice President of Agricultural Administration and Dean of the Ohio State University College of Food, Agricultural, and Environmental Sciences, Dr. Kath Ann Kress. Thanks for the introduction, Ty. Although we're joining you a little differently this year, our gratitude and appreciation to our donors is unwavering, especially during these challenging times. I know there's been many disappointments and challenges this year in order to keep our youth and families safe. But with your support, there's also been hope, innovation, and creativity to keep these youth engaged. Ohio 4-H camp has often been called the best week of summer, but how does camp happen during a pandemic? This summer, Ohio 4-H used video content and interactive platforms such as Zoom to hold camps. In June, Camp Ish was the first ever three-day statewide virtual camp. Activities included flag ceremony, reciting the 4-H pledge, theme days, craft instruction, and home-based camping, which allowed youth to not miss out on their best week of summer. This innovation and creativity was carried out through several additional virtual camps held across the state. Ohio 4-H teaches many skills, with one of the most important this year being resilience. As we saw that fairs would most likely be virtual, Ohio 4-H quickly pivoted to help 4-H youth continue to learn, prepare, and in some cases still be able to present or show at their fair. We're grateful that 4-Hers also pivoted with us to gain this knowledge and experience. You'll often hear me say that 4-H is the first class these youth take at The Ohio State University. Ohio 4-H's virtual engagements help support career and workforce readiness and prepare our future scientists and leaders that will create a vibrant future for our state our nation, and the world. The 4-H community is strong. Governor DeWine gave several shout outs during his briefings to our Ohio 4-H youth, from the thank you notes 4-H members wrote to essential workers, to the youth and volunteers that made masks for their communities. 
As you know, community service is a strong component of the 4-H program, and one thing this pandemic has shown is that together as a community, we can overcome great challenges. Our college strives to advance industry, advance science, advance knowledge, and advance people. And we cannot do that without the help of friends and donors like you. Thank you again for your continued support and joining us in our critical mission. Together, we sustain life. Thank you so much, Dean Kress. Uh, 4-H, an important part of the college's mission. And now let's hear from some 4-H youth. 4-H members around the state were asked, what was your favorite 4-H project this year and why? My favorite 4 H project this year was Science Fun with Physics. There were tons of hands on experiments that I had to do. It was exciting to see the final results of each experiment after spending a lot of time making and setting up each experiment. This year, my favorite 4 H project that I took was Insect Adventures 3. In this project, not only do you get to learn a ton about the insect world, you also get to create an amazing insect display. My favorite insect that is in my personal display is the emerald wasp because it is tiny, but it has a wicked stinger. My favorite 4-H project last year was Market Hogs. And the reason that was my favorite is because it, it taught me several good skills, two of those being work ethic and routine. In addition to that, these animals were very fun to work with, and overall it was a great experience in working with them on the farm. Some of the projects that I've taken are rabbits, woodworking, which I built this bandy here, gardening, and cooking. What was your favorite project this year? Um, this year my favorite project is, was rabbits because I couldn't really do much because I had uh, spinal fusion. My favorite 4-H project for 2020 was my market and breeder goat. My favorite project this year would have to be bandanas for shelter animals. So this is a bandana on my cat, Mystere. This is another bandana that I made. All of these are hand sewn and for this bandana I added the Super D and I sewed it using cloth. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. So this one I used the rolling hem to sew these. This is the rolling hem. I think I'd have to say this was my favorite project because I was able to learn a new sewing technique and I helped out shelter animals so they could get adopted. I would like to say that my favorite project from this year was the virtual teen program. Now, I have two favorite activities actually. My first favorite activity was one time we lip synced to our favorite songs on the Zoom call and just had a big old nice dance party. That was amazing. My second favorite activity was when we got to grow tomato plants and I currently have my little tomato plant growing in my garden now, or my mom's garden. So that's really nice and I'm proud of myself because I can't keep a plant to save my life sometimes. My favorite 4-H project this year was my senior quilt that I made out of all of my t-shirts from uh, elementary school, middle school, and high school out of all of the extracurriculars that I had done. It was my favorite because it was a good way to get all of my t-shirts together and to remember uh, my younger years through elementary, middle school, and high school. This year I have taken six projects and these are all my awards that I've won from them. So. My favorite project of all of the projects I took was Go. I learned so much because it's a new animal on the farm and I loved working with them and preparing them and I just think it was a really great project. Robotics was my favorite 4-H project this year because even through a global pandemic, our club was still able to meet over WebEx. This allowed me to have something creative, fun, and challenging to do in the late spring and over the summer. 
My favorite 4-H project from this year was the two barrows that I raised myself. Watching them go from piglets to the show ring was very rewarding, and I even got reserve grand champion with one of them. My favorite 4-H project was beginning fishing because I love fishing, I love swimming, and I love being on the water. Wow, it is always impressive to hear from our youth and learn about their accomplishments, isn't it? Tonight, we're honored to have Jennifer Sarangelo join us. She is the president and CEO at National 4-H Council. Jennifer. Hi, I'm Jennifer Sarangelo, president and CEO of the National 4-H Council, and I'm so happy to join you for this celebration of youth to support the Ohio 4-H Foundation. Like you, I wish we could be together in person. I love coming to Ohio. For the last few years, we've had the chance to host two of our National 4-H Council board meetings on the Ohio State University campus. And we've had a chance to meet in the beautiful Nationwide and Farm Bureau building. I've also had a chance to speak at your teen conferences and to attend the national conference that OSU Extension hosted a few years ago for Extension 4-H educators around the country, and I got to visit your beautiful state house. But my favorite thing when I come to Ohio is your delicious sweets. I love to get my Buckeye candies and a great scoop of Grater's ice cream. It is the very best. I love it. But I'm happy to be with you virtually since we can't be together in person today. But before I uh, jump in, I wanna say thanks and greetings to my friend, Dean Kress. She is an amazing advocate and champion for young people in Ohio and for 4-Hers around the country. So hello to Dean Kress. And I just want to recognize the partnership and, and mutual support that um, I enjoy and my whole team at National 4-H Council enjoys with the leadership of Ohio Extension and 4-H staff. So to Dr. Jacqueline, Kirby Wilkins, Kirk Bloor, Crystal Ott, thank you so much for having me and for the great work you do every day to support our 4-H young people in Ohio. So many of you know that Ohio, Clark County, Ohio was the birthplace of 4-H in 1902 um, through the vision of A.B. Graham. And Ohio 4-H has been leading the way ever since. In addition to the impact that um, Ohio 4-H has on young people in every county in Ohio, your young people and your staff and the OSU faculty make an impact in the nation and around the world in food and nutrition, citizenship and positive youth development. So your strong leadership extends beyond the borders of Ohio, but to many levels. And one of the ways that really manifests itself that I get to see many times is through your youth leaders. At the national level, we can always count on Ohio 4-H to bring and to, to lift up the best of the best in terms of young leaders who are facing the future, who are persistent and resilient in times like this, and they make such a contribution at the national level. So we have a National Young Alumni Advisory Committee of our board of directors at the national level, and three of the 22 members that have, we've had it for four years, and there's been 22 total members, and three of them have been from Ohio, and we also have a national awards contest called 4-H Youth in Action, and it recognizes young people for their contributions in uh, our program areas and for overcoming obstacles. And we have had two national winners from Ohio since, 19, since 2017. Uh, we've had two national winners and three honorable mentions. So your young people are making a difference um, in Ohio and all around the country, inspiring so many people to join 4-H and to continue to support 4-H. So I know none of this amazing work in Ohio for young people would be possible without the support of the donors and friends and the university leadership that makes it possible. So I just wanna thank you so much to all of you who care, this, care so much about the youth of Ohio. They are making a difference and your gifts really matter to ensuring that this amazing program 
Ohio 4-H can continue to make an impact, especially in these very challenging times. So we hope you'll give, please give, support the auction. And I just wanna thank you so much for all you do for Ohio 4-H. I hope you have a great night. Thank you, Jennifer. We appreciate the support National 4-H Council provides to our local programs. Speaking of support, let's hear from another one of our sponsors, Heartland Bank. Well, the Heartland Bank was formed in 1911 by farmers for farmers. Our family has been very involved in the Ohio 4-H Foundation and uh, the Ohio Farm Bureau and, and various things throughout the state, uh, you know, ever since I've been a kid. So uh, for us to, to step back into that business-wise was a natural fit for us. Um, plus, it's Ohio's largest industry. Agriculture is a big deal in Ohio. At Heartland, we focus on providing value. And that is first, we want to walk in on the first appointment uh, with you and the first time we meet you and try to establish the fact that we can help you regardless of whether you buy a product or service from us or not. One of my top five goals I would say in my career is to be able to own some farmland and um, I guess they've made the initial step possible. Um, you know, being able to call Brian and give him my crazy ideas sometimes and he, he listens to me and, um, and tries to help me fulfill my dreams. Very personable um, and easy to work with and because they understand what we're trying to accomplish um, in the ag side of our business. Um, and I think the reason why they know that is because they come here. They come to the farm, they sit down, they visit with us. As we're able to walk in and get and be a breath of fresh air to a lot of these uh, a lot of these folks running their operations. When they have a bad year, we understand as long as we have quality communication, we are getting the financial statements we need, good or bad, uh, and we have the uh, proper cooperation, we're going to be in their corner. We appreciate Heartland's support as a Platinum Clover sponsor this evening. Now's a good time to check in on the auction. How are your items doing? Have you been outbid? It's the right time of year to enjoy that fire pit, you know. In case you missed it earlier, the website is 4hcoy.givesmart.com. And don't forget, the auction's only open until 9 o'clock, so make sure you're watching your items closely. Now let's hear from some more of our 4-H members. We asked them, what do you want to be when you grow up, and how will your 4-H experience get you there? I want to I wanna make videos when I grow up, and my 4-H experience will help me because this year, because of the pandemic, I made a lot of videos to do my 4-H project. Ever since I was five years old, I knew that I wanted to be a pediatrician when I grew up. 4-H gives me the experience of working with people, animals, public speaking, stepping out of my comfort zones, and giving in-person and online judging. I will need all these skills to be a successful pediatrician. I'm currently studying sustainable plant systems with the hopes of becoming a landscape designer. My 4-H experience has equipped me with the skills necessary to pursue any degree and has connected me with people who have helped to shape my future goals. But 4-H hasn't just taught me about what I want to be, it's taught me about who I want to be. 4-H has shown me that the importance of giving back and that many hands make a stronger community. I want to continue to have a positive impact on the next generation by showing them that no matter where you are in life, you can always make your best better. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be an animal behavior spe behavioral specialist, which is involved in my degree. I'm going for zoo and wildlife biology, so, you know, lots of fun stuff. Um, and how, how uh, 4-H will help me with this is I've, well, obviously the animals, uh, interacted with a lot of animals my entire life, grew up on a farm, uh, Alongside my um, my friends, uh, my social skills have really grown with 4-H and my leadership skills. When I grow up, I'd like to go into agricultural business and marketing. Some of the skills that 4-H has taught me that will help me in this field are things such as money management, people skills, and being able to in public speak. Another one of the things I'd like to do is livestock judging. 4-H has taught me most of the things I know about livestock judging and has also given me the opportunity to compete in contests. I would like to do something as a machine operator or welding or something. Then you go to a trade school for like something like that. And 
I think uh, 4-H would help me because it would help teach responsibility. I am currently at The Ohio State University with my major in Industrial Design and my minor in Theater. Being in 4-H was very helpful to me in both of those fields. For my minor in theater, I was able to partner with the costumes department in create and design, and so the costume for what would have been the Springs musical. And for my design aspect of 4-H, it has been very helpful working hands-on with different materials and figuring out what materials would be best for making all the different projects that I had made. So it was very helpful learning all those different skills. When I grow up, I would like to be a veterinarian. The knowledge and leadership in 4-H will help me greatly. When I grow up, I plan on going to Ohio State University to get my DVM and then open up my own veterinary practice in Athens. Isn't that impressive? Ohio 4-H has some great leaders with bright futures ahead of them. On behalf of the Ohio Farm Bureau Federation and Foundation, we're proud to continue our support of these true leaders and Ohio 4-H. The Ohio Farm Bureau Federation and the Ohio Farm Bureau Foundation are once again proud sponsors of the event this year. Despite challenges of being able to get together in person, we're glad to see people come together virtually to support the development of Ohio's young people. Farm Bureau is a proud sponsor of our next generation of young agricultural leaders and look forward to our continued support of Ohio 4-H. Thank you, Ohio Farm Bureau and Foundation, for your Platinum Clover support of this year's celebration. We'll now hear from some 4-H youth who will share how the pandemic challenged them to both change their project plans and create new leadership opportunities through virtual engagement. This year, I got two feeder calves for the first time, but shortly after I got them, I learned I couldn't show them at the fair due to COVID-19. This made it easy to want to give up and sell them, but I kept working hard with them and now they're both show broke and now being even better shown in for next year's fair. Even though we had to endure the effects of a pandemic this year, I treated all my projects like any other year, and I stay dedicated to learning and doing the best to make quality projects. I feel just because we had to do things differently, such as wearing a mask for judging, didn't mean we should not do them. Adversity strengths our confidence and will as well as gives us the ability to conquer future obstacles. I am proud of my project and our superior and outstanding with projects to reflect my efforts. Um, I think that the thing that most impressed me this year, um, even with COVID, was how all the 4-H members and supporters and parents and leaders and extension office personnel and members pulled together to make this year successful um, and quite enjoyable in my opinion despite the less than ideal circumstances. Um, I think that through all this, despite everything crazy that's been going on, 4-H has still been able to do what it's always done and that support its members and um, provide learning and leadership opportunities for everyone and um, be a good resource and support for everyone. Um, I've seen many examples of this through the COVID pandemic, whether it's been the Ohio State 4-H Extension hosting STEM opportunities for learning, um, whether it's uh, local um, clubs around the state hosting virtual dog events so people can show their dogs, or whether it's a junior fair board that's pulled together to help make a fair happen. I think that all of this um, love and support in these examples go to show that 4-H is an important organization to uh, millions of people, whether it's been a past experience as a member, current experience, and future. And I think that um, we all need to pull together and continue to work hard to support the organization of 4-H. That means so much. Chess. Throughout my involvement in team leadership activities and as an officer, I was able to help create and lead many online activities. We started with a virtual Y4H recruitment video, spreading the 4-H message, and as a camp ambassador, I was able to share my 4-H camping experience with volunteers. As we began virtual activities as a group, I helped plan an online Cloverbed Fun Day 
and encourage social media participation to keep 4-H members motivated and involved throughout the pandemic. As I age out this year, my hope is that I completed my team leadership involvement by setting the stones for the future of Lawrence County 4-H as we continue to navigate throughout the pandemic. Something that has been amazing that I was able to do was two online swim classes. The first one is about um, science and I was able to talk to three different scientists and um, it was really cool being able to talk to them and ask questions and um, I was actually be able to relate to one of them because they love creaking and streams and stuff which is something that is one of my favorite things to do. And I was also, the other one I was able to take was a um, room designing one. And I was able to talk to three different home designers, which was really cool. And I was able to learn more about that. And I'm actually, right now, a, I'm going to be redesigning my room, which is really cool. Um, in that spin class, I was able to decorate this pot, which is really fun. And this is now a decoration in my room and I love it so much and yeah, thank you, bye. This year, because of the pandemic, I was able to take a once in a lifetime project, my stay at home summer. Throughout the spring and summer, I was able to participate in a mask drive create and run a virtual sourdough fundraiser, take care of bluebirds, and for the first time ever, show rabbits. And all of this because I suddenly found my schedule very free. But I wasn't about to let any pandemic get in the way of my 4-H season. I used my sewing skills from my sewing project voluntary to sew masks for the for businesses and community members of Worcester and Tree. I sold my masks to all over Ohio, Arizona, Texas, Pennsylvania, and Kentucky. A portion of the money that I raised went to Wayne County 4-H and the Wayne County Fairgrounds. I'm very inspired to compete. But when COVID canceled state judging, I had to learn to look beyond the trophy. This year has shown more than ever that 4-H is not just about an award. It's about the people you meet and the skills that you gain along the way. Um, one positive example of how we overcame COVID in Clinton County was a lot of the 4-H groups, well all the 4-H groups had to meet on Zoom or some other way of virtual learning and that was a really good experience for us older members to be able to teach the younger kids and to even teach some of our advisors how to better use Zoom and how to still meet the best that we could so that was a really good learning experience for everybody to be able to learn how to use Zoom and just to be able to come together even though it was a really hard time. The pandemic has opened a lot of creative doors for many campers, camp counselors, and just people from all walks of life to express themselves and even find themselves. I personally was really looking forward to summer camp this year. This year would have definitely been Adventure Central's 20th anniversary, 20th summer camp, 20th overnight camp, and it would have been my sixth summer working there. So it was really emotional for me when I heard that we wouldn't be able to do that this summer. Luckily, a way that I pivoted was I got offered a different opportunity, a much different opportunity, um, with a new summer job. And But with that came the responsibility of prioritizing the things and the people that I love and hold so dear to my heart. Um, it was hard for me because of my schedule. Sometimes I wouldn't be off on Tuesdays and sometimes or Thursdays, but the days that I were off, I made as much as an effort as I could to get there to see my family because the people at Adventure Central aren't just my friends and co-workers. I've known them for so long 
every single last one of them are family. And I would like to say again, thank you so much for everything that each and every one of you has taught me over the years. And one last thing that I have learned is that you make time for the things and the people that you love. And you always make time for family. Ohio 4-H members are resilient, and it's great to see how they've adapted their efforts to complete their 4-H projects this year. I now turn it over to Dr. Kurt Bloor, state 4-H leader, to learn about the key focus areas of the Ohio 4-H program. Thanks, Ty. It's an absolute pleasure to be here tonight with our 4-H community, and I thank you for joining us as we work to support Ohio 4-H. We are so grateful for the sponsors, donors, supporters, volunteers, and members that make 4-H possible. Our research-backed, hands-on approach to 4-H provides youth with experiences they need to be successful in life, and it helps lead them to productive careers and strong communities. We do this by creating true leaders, ensuring career and workforce readiness, endowing future success, and growing 4-H across Ohio. Tonight, we're focusing on these last two objectives. Your generosity helps build Ohio 4-H endowments that provide ongoing financial support for 4-H programming that will continue for generations to come. The proceeds from our Celebration of Youth auction will help support these endowments. Tonight, we also ask you to join us in our mission to grow 4-H across Ohio and invite you to contribute a special donation to help make that possible. On the screen right now, you will see the page where you can go to support growing the 4-H program in Ohio. Go to 4hcoy.givesmart.com and click the Donate tab. Your generous donations will help us provide starter kits for new clubs in 2021, marketing resources to promote 4-H in your community, and increase volunteer recruitment efforts across the state. Thank you for joining us in helping grow 4-H for all youth. Back to you, Ty. Thank you so much, Kirk. We are looking forward to all the ways the Ohio 4-H program will grow with the help of our supporters. And don't forget, you can make your donation on the auction platform. It's my pleasure now to introduce the Honorable Mike DeWine, Governor of Ohio, and First Lady Fran DeWine. We are big fans of Ohio 4-H. Hello, I'm Ohio Governor Mike DeWine. And I'm Fran DeWine. I loved 4-H when I was growing up, and each of our eight kids participated in 4-H. They really enjoyed their experiences, and we did too. Fran and I have seen how 4-H shapes young people's lives and enriches communities. And we've enjoyed visiting so many county fairs across Ohio over the years, in addition to the great Ohio State Fair. Of course, this year with the COVID-19 pandemic, things have certainly been quite different. But we understand that despite the challenges 4-H'ers have been creative in showcasing their projects and celebrating their personal accomplishments during this unprecedented time. And when camps were canceled, 4-H extension educators created virtual camp experiences so campers could still receive leadership and educational opportunities. We know 4-H members have continued to provide service to people who have been impacted by the pandemic by doing things like making masks, collecting food donations for food pantries, and helping teachers set up virtual lessons for students. That's no surprise to us. We are proud of the 4-H community. We're a stronger Ohio because of it. Thank you, Governor and Mrs. DeWine. Ohio 4-H is honored to have such avid supporters. It looks like our evening is coming to a close. It has been my pleasure to be with you tonight, and at this time, please welcome Crystal Ott, Ohio 4-H Foundation Manager for some closing remarks. On behalf of the Ohio 4-H Foundation, we appreciate each one of you for joining us this evening. A special thanks to all of our sponsors and speakers participating in tonight's Celebration of Youth event. And of course, thank you, Ty, for serving as our host. The Ohio 4-H Foundation Board worked many hours to make tonight possible, and their support is invaluable. Thank you all for your hard work. Thanks also to Emily Neiman, the Ohio 4-H Foundation Program Assistant, for all her help tonight and throughout the year. And finally, thanks to all of you. Ohio 4-H is an outstanding youth program that you, our many supporters, help make possible. Now don't forget, you can also help Ohio 4-H grow at 4 hcoy 
www.givesmart.com and click on the donate tab at the top of your screen. Also, this auction closes at 9 o'clock p.m. tonight and you do not want to get outbid. And finally, we want to hear your thoughts about tonight's program. Please take a moment to fill out the survey in the chat box. Thank you all for being part of tonight's celebration of youth. We hope to see you next year.